What's going on everybody? My name is Rico. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my channel is about vlogs, series and tutorials. And in this episode, we're going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to edit a couple of pictures in Darktable and then we're going to create a panorama from it. Thanks to Anthony Morganti, a few weeks ago he uploaded a video which was a photo challenge asking us to edit the photos and to create a panorama of it. I'll put the link in the description to his video so you guys can check it out yourself as well. So without further ado, let's start. And this is the first image that we're going to work on. I'm going to use a style or create a style and then I'm going to apply the style to the other ones. Now first let me show you guys how the end result will be. So here's the original image and if I move this slider to the right, you see that this is the edited version and it looks much much better and very natural. I did that by going to the last step and hit the snapshot button. So I've got a snapshot over here and then click the original one, click the snapshot one and then you can use the slider and move it from left to right to reveal the differences between uh, the two of them. So once again on the right side the original and on the left side our edited version. So let's start. So I'm going to compress the history stack and I'm going to start with the first thing. The first thing that we're going to do, let me go to the favorites menu. I've put all the modules that we're going to use in my favorites. Uh, the one I didn't add in my favorites is the basic adjustments module. So let me place it in my favorites like so. Let's go to there and now it's in my favorites. If you don't see the modules over here, you can find them in this list over there or you can go to more modules and then find them in the list down below. As soon as you click one, it'll pop up in your favorites menu and then you can start using it. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to deselect the snapshot is we're going to activate the chromatic aberrations module. That will get rid of purple and green fringes on the edges and stuff like that. I want to change the demosaic from uh, PPG to Amaze because I think that looks best with my Panasonic GH5. So let's close that one down as well. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use one of the most difficult modules in Darktable, which is the Filmic one. So let's activate it. And there are a couple of options that you can choose from. You've got the white point, you've got the black point, and then you've got, well, let's say the gray point. If you move this to the left, you will see that the image will become very bright. If you move it to the right, you will see that the image will become more dark. So for this instance, I want it to be on around seven. There you go, a little bit more. There you go. And if we change the white point to the left, you see that it becomes very bright. And if we move it to the right, you see that it becomes very flat. And you can see it at the histogram as well. For this image, I want it to be around 4.7, I think. That looks a lot better. The image is still very flat, but don't worry, we're going to address that in a minute. I want to change the black point as well. If I move it to the right, you will notice that the image will become very dark or the blacks will become very black. And if you move it to the left, the blacks will be faded out a lot more. Same with the contrast. If you increase the contrast, the blacks will become more black. And if you decrease it, it will be more washed out like so. For this, I want to change it quite a bit, but I still want to keep it dark. So let's move the slider till around here. And I think this looks pretty natural if you ask me. So now what I want to do is I want to uh, increase the contrast because it's very dull. So we need to change that. So let's add in quite a bit. There you go, you see the blacks change as well. I'm going to change the latitude and the latitude is the width of the linear domain in the middle of the curve, which is over here. So these are the shadows, these are the highlights. And you can increase it to get more contrast at the extreme luminances and it has no effect on the midtones. So basically it has no effect in here, but only on the axes. So let's increase that one by quite a bit. There you go. And I want to change the balance as well. So if I move this to the right, you will see that the balance will lean more into the highlights. And if you move it to the left, the balance will lean more into the shadows. So I'm going to put this on around 12, I think, 11.77. Yeah, that looks pretty fine. So I'm going to keep that as is. I'm going to keep the contrast as well, but as you can see right now, the image is very dull and it doesn't really pop. 
uh, to say the least. But we're going to change that by just one click, which is preserve the chrominance. If I check that box, you see that, boom, we've got a lot more color and that's exactly the look that I'm going for in this image because it's an outdoor image it's got a clear sky it's got beautiful water it's got lots of greens and now it's really really standing out so that's the thing that we're going to do with the filming module so let's close that one down and now i want to sharpen it a little bit i'm just going to activate it i'm not going to change the radius i'm not going to change the amount i'm just going to use the standard words but I'm just making sure that the image is more sharp than it was before. And then the final thing that I want to do is there are a couple of things in this image that I don't like. For instance, the bird over here, uh, and I can crop that one out, but I won't be doing that because I need this image for a panorama. But I want to get rid of this bird. I want to get rid of this cloud. I want to get rid of this part of cloud and this part as well. But if I remove it over here, that means I need to remove it in the water as well, because this is one gigantic mirror for the sky. The best way to do that in this case is by using the retouch module. I'm going to activate it. I'm going to make sure that I increase the scales to around seven. And I made a video on how you can use this to remove blemishes and acne from the face. I'll be sure to link it up here. Uh, be sure to check it out after you're done watching this video. I can highly recommend it. It'll teach you how to uh, enhance portrait shots. It's one of the things you guys requested the past few weeks as well. And I'll make sure to upload a couple of portrait tutorials as well. So I got that covered already. So let's click the heel selection. Let's click the ellipse. And for the bird, this is way too big. So let me decrease the size of scrolling the mouse wheel button away from me. And if you click it and hold your mouse button and then move it to the right or to the left, that will be a donor area. And you want it to be as close as possible to your subject. So around here is fine. And now you see that the bird is gone and it looks absolutely natural. For the cloud, I need to increase it a little bit or quite a bit actually. Click it, move it to the side. There we go. And for this little spot, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, 200%. That's a little bit too much, 100%. That's a little bit better. So here's the piece of cloud. Let me decrease the size, increase it. There you go. Let's click it to the left. There you go. That looks absolutely amazing. And I want to get rid of this part of cloud as well. So I'm going to click inside it, move it to here. There you go. I want this area to be gone as well. There you go, that looks fantastic. But now, as I said, I removed it from the sky, so I need to remove it from the water as well. And I need to increase it by quite a bit to make sure that I cover everything. So let's just move it to here. Boom, now it's gone, it looks very natural. We'll zoom out in a minute so you guys can see it even better. I'm going to click here as well, just drag it downwards like so. There you go. So now the clouds are gone. Let me put it to fit the screen. And let's show you guys what I've done. I, I see that something didn't go right over here. So let me just click here, move it to the right side. And that looks a lot better. So now we've cleared up the sky, we've cleared up the water. So that looks great. If you want to know what you've done, which uh, paths you made or which masks you made, all you gotta do is press this symbol and then it'll show you all the masks that you have applied. So that looks great. Let me close that one down. And now the fun part starts because I want this to be applied to the other three as well. For that, I need to create a style by clicking this button and then give it a name. So let's say a landscape. There you go. Click all these boxes, check them. There you go. And then hit save. I'm not going to do that because I've already done that, but that's what you need to do. Cancel. And then what we're going to do is we're going to the light table menu again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply this style to the other three images. So for that, I'm going to click one, click two, click three, holding the control button. And then I'm going to styles. And in this case, it's the landscape, bright weather. Double click it. And look at that. It's already starting to change. Now, what I noticed from the light table menu is that this has got a lot more color and this as well than these two. So the easiest way to adjust this is to just add some saturation. So let's double click this one. It will be brought into the dark room. 
I'm not going to change the clouds uh, because that will be erased in the final panorama image. So I'm just going to use the basic adjustments, click it, activate it, hit the right mouse button. I'm going very fast, I know, but 0.15, there you go, it's got a lot more color. Maybe even make it 0.2. Now the colors are standing out some more. So let me close that one down. Let's go to the light table menu. I'm going to do the same for here. So I'm going to double click it and I'm going to open up the basic adjustments and I'm going to fill in 0 0.2 as well. There you go. Let's go back to the light table menu. Now what we need to do is we need to click the first, click the last, and then let's close down the styles menu. Let's open up the export selected. Click the path that you want so go to the folder that you want select the directory and then hit export and all the images will be exported to that and once you're done exporting the images it's time to create a panorama using the free Yugen plugin i'm going to show you guys how to get it and how to use it let's go so for that you're going to google you're going to fill in Yugen plugin gimp and then click the Yugen panorama photo stitcher and then go to download and then download it and then install it. And once you've installed it, it's time to use it. So let's open it up. This is the first menu that you'll see. And what you need to do is you need to import the images that you want to use. So I'm going to click open images or open files. I'm going to select these four. The order doesn't matter, just open them up. And then Yugen will import them automatically. And now as you can see, everything is crooked. It doesn't look very good. So the second step is to position it. So let's click it and then this script will run. And after we're done doing that, we need to create the panorama. So that's step number three, let's click it. And then what I want to do is this is a very big file size. So I'm going to change that to the 4K resolution. I'm going to keep this as is though. I'm going to change the file from TIFF to JPEG. No point in making it a PNG for now. And just make sure that these two boxes are not checked and this one is because that resembles our situation and let's click OK and then it says your project needs to be saved so let's do that OK give it a name just keep it as is save it and now it's going to ask you to give the file a name so your final file so in this case we're going to call it panorama and then we're going to save it and now this script will run and once the script is done, the panorama will be done as well. So I'm going to wait for this and then we'll be back in a minute to show you guys the end result. Okay guys, so now that we're waiting on this to finish, I'm really curious to know if you guys would see me do a behind the scenes video. So I'll show you guys around on how I create my videos, how many times I mess up, how many takes I have to get the gear that I'm using, the monitor that I'm using and stuff like that. So let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear your opinion on this. So now that we're done, let me show you guys the end result. So here's the panorama, which has been made from these four images. Let me double click it to see how everything went. And there you go. This is the panorama that we've just made. We've edited the photos. Everything looks amazing. Everything looks in order. I'm very satisfied. Let me enlarge it for you guys. And there you go so this is the final result but what i see is that there are some clouds over here which i've edited out in the other version you can edit these out in gimp but i'm fine with how this looks so once again this looks absolutely amazing with the help of dark table and the yugen plugin for gimp and that's it i hope you guys like it let me know in the comment section down below i would love to hear your thoughts don't forget to check out anthony's channel and his video on this I'll put the link in the description down below as well. Uh, what I would like to hear as well is what you guys think of the audio quality. I've bought a Rode new shooter kit. I've got a lavalier mic right now. So I hope that gets rid of some of the reverb that I had in the past few videos. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that as well. And for this week, I guess there's just one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit that bell button to be the first to be notified when I drop in a video. And until next time, doei!